Okay, so hi there everyone. We're now in our next video on statistics. Um, what we're going to show here today, I'm going to show you um, how to run a t-test of independent samples using the software application of Jamovi. So you can see here in the left side of the screen, um, one example. Um, um, here, I'm just going to read it once. A study of the effect of caffeine on muscle metabolism used 18 male volunteers who each underwent arm exercise tests. Nine of the men were randomly selected to take a capsule containing pure caffeine one hour before the test, and the other men received a placebo capsule. Um, during each exercise, the subject's respiratory exchange ratio, which is the RER, was measured. So take note that the RER is the ratio of the carbon dioxide produced to oxygen consumed and is an indicator of whether energy is being obtained from carbohydrates or fats. So the question of interest of that of this experimenter was whether on average caffeine changes the rate of the RER. So the two populations being compared are the men who have not taken the caffeine, that's the, that's um, the men who have taken the placebo capsule, and the men who have taken the caffeine, which is um, this column here. So if caffeine has no effect on RER, the two sets of data can be regarded as having um, come from the same population. That is, there's no um, difference, there's no significant difference. So the results are as follows. Um, we can see here the placebo um I mean the, the the men who have taken the placebo capsule, which um, you can regard we can regard as the men who have not taken the caffeine, and here in this um, column here we can say this that these are the men that have taken the caffeine. So we can see the measurements of their RER, and we want to check if there is a significant difference. Um, in the naked eye, we can see that there's a difference, which is 100.56 here for the placebo and 94.2. Uh, 94.22 for the caffeine. So we want there's a there's there's a difference, but we want to measure if there is a significant difference. So since there's no alpha level um was being um what do you call that? <clears throat> there's no alpha level indicated in this problem. So hence we're going to assume that it's 0 0.05. So we have four steps again in making use of the p-value approach. We have the step one to be on the hypothesis. You know, um, state the hypothesis and such. Um, step two will be finding out the p-value, and then also state the alpha level. Step three will be the decision rule, wherein we're going to um, uh, compare the p-value that we have taken from a uh, statistical software and the alpha level. And then um, part four will be the um, decision rule or the conclusion. So what we're going to show here is number one, we can see that the hypotheses are are here so it's a two two tail test clearly um we won't run that and page that okay um here only so we have the, the two two sample um t test in for independent samples we're going to use it here so we're going to i'm going to direct you on the left side of the video left side of your screen so we're, i'm going to name this plus um rer and this will be continuous and the second column I will say as the type of capsule. Okay. So this is nominal. So this is the profiling, the type of capsule, and this one will be the the uh, the RER column will be the all the values. So we will write it like this. We're not going to write it just like um, in this positioning, because um, in a normal survey, um, you know, the data from your survey it will be one row per per respondent. So this will be respondent one, respondent two, respondent three, and so on. So we will say that respondents one to nine will be all of those respondents who have taken the placebo and 10 to 18 will be those who have taken the caffeine. So let's have it. 105, 119, 100, 97, 96, 101, 94, 95, 98. Okay, so all of these will be placebo. Let's name that as placebo. Okay, and then let's, let's just copy everything here. So there's nine of them, and then 10 to 18 will be those who have taken the caffeine capsule. So it will be until 18. So let's have the values 96, 99, 94, 89, 96, 90. 388, 105, and 88. So let's do the t test of um, independent, independent samples t test. So we're going to have 
we, we need to go on the analysis on this analysis tab or um originally we're, we we should see the data tab here and then we'll click the, the analysis tab we would like to click on the t-tests and we click on the independent samples t-test after this uh, we will be taken into this type of table we're going to have this options here the the, the things that we want to do um, with the analysis what would we want jamobi to do so this is our input we click on the rer and we want that to be inside our dependent variable so we click it here and then we want to be our, gr our grouping variable we would want it to be the type of capsule and we, we click that there and pretty much we want the students t test the hypothesis is two-tailed so therefore it's unequal you can see it here um let's just leave it the, that way um these are additional statistics that, that you may want um, if you want the descriptives let's put a check on that so that you can see the mean the sd will be the same um all the others um you can you can um try to experiment on them in a while but we won't be actually needing them for now so you can see here in our independent samples t test let's, let me um extend this okay here so in the independent samples t-test, we can see that your RER statistic is 1.99. That's your test statistic. If we're going to make use of the traditional approach, so you will need that. Your DF is 16 and your p-value is 0 0.063. And all the, the descriptives are here because we check the descriptives. So the mean are pretty much the same. The SDs are also the same. So what we want in particular is this value of p or your p-value. So you can see that your p-value is 0 0.063. Clearly, 0 0.063 is greater than your alpha level, which is 0 0.05. Therefore, our answer would be we will um, not reject, okay? Meaning we will not reject the null hypothesis, okay? So if we will not reject the null hypothesis, therefore, we are we are still um, we're believing that um, there is no significant difference in the mean respiratory exchange rate or ratio between the ones who have taken the placebo capsule and the ones who have taken the caffeine so you can see it also in one um t-test run here in peach that that the p-value is the same 0 0.063 okay so that's it um therefore again our decision rule step three would be you compare your p-value and your alpha since your p-value is greater than your alpha therefore we do not reject the ho and your step four um, will be um, telling that your null hypothesis is true, meaning there is no significant difference. So um, that's it for the that's it for this uh, this video um, in independent samples uh, t test um, using Jamobi. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you would like and subscribe. See ya.